Mike. I'm Preston Soto, founder of the Elegant Oxford. So the pair I'm working on today is a pair of Alan Edmonds Carlisles, and they were sent in by a viewer of the channel. And the, the uppers are actually really scratched and bent out of shape. There's a lot of uh, slight gouging by the toe area. And if you look at the, the sole of the shoe, um, it's really worn down. So they will have to be resold, and then I'm going to have to repair the upper and um, shine them so that they look presentable. I focus more on the upper of the shoe, which is the leather. So I do the dyeing, the artistic patina, or and the reshaping of the leather and all that. But when it comes to the sole, I do have to take it to a cobbler. And I have a friend here in town who I take it to. So the pair I'm working on today, they are Goodyear welted. Um, they feature a 360 degree Goodyear welt, so the you know the stitching goes all around the shoe. That that's not normal. Usually, it's just 270, and then the heel is nailed on. Um, so that's more of a of a thing Alan Edmonds does. So after removing the old sole, um, Isaac put on a new sole, and then he cuts a, a groove channel around, and then he uses a special Goodyear welting machine to stitch the sole to to the welt of the shoe, which is connected to the upper, which is the leather part. And that's kind of how you get a new sole put on a shoe. After the stitching, um, he made sure to add some dye to the edge to make it look dark brown like it was from the factory, and then he used some special wax just to you know, shine that up so everything looked normal. And uh, that was it. So once the shoes are back home, it's really important to to reshape the leather. I don't want it to look like, you know, really unshaped. So adding a shoe tree is a really important part of the process. And I use vintage wooden shoe trees. They're really shaped like a shoe and they really fill in all the gaps really well. So acetone, which is just normal nail polish remover that you can get anywhere that's 100% acetone, um, dries almost instantly. So using acetone, you can add that to the leather and it evaporates really, really quickly. And that serves the same purpose as water. The only thing that I caution people against using acetone is that um, it can strip a shoe really easily. You can strip the finish off of the shoe. So you gotta be really careful because if you do that, you might need to have the shoe re-dyed. And since the shoe is not in you know, a condition that I care for right now, I am gonna be using acetone so I can reshape the shoe and strip the, finish, the old finish off at the same time. So once you remove the shoe tree, you'll really notice that even without the shoe tree in anymore, the leather is as stiff as new and it's ready you know, to be worn again. The next step is removing the scratches and the, and, and the cuts from the front of the toe area. And this is actually a pretty common thing you see in shoes. And that's a challenge because you can't just use polish to cover that up. But this shoe does have a lot of cracks and a lot of cuts. And this part can make people a lot really nervous. You really have to get rid of those lifted pieces of leather that have been cut. So using sandpaper, about 300 grit, you're gonna go back and forth and kind of shave that leather down. So um, once you sand down that area, um, you have to fill it with a, a type of resin. And there's a special leather a filler I use called Saphir Renovating Cream. And it contains pigment and resin, and it goes over on top, and then you let it dry, or you use a hair dryer, and you kind of let it dry, you, you dry it a lot more quickly. And then you use finer sandpaper, and you go over that area again, back and forth. And then you put more resin on top, you let it dry, and you go back and forth. And this process can take anywhere from 30 minutes to two, three hours. Once the, the, that renovating cream's been applied, you have to get into the finer sandpaper. So I use 3000 grit, which is a lot finer, and water drops, so you're basically wet sanding and making sure the, the area is really, really, really smooth. So once the leather's smooth, you do have some, it looks like it's been sanded down, there's like some lines and some darker areas, and what you want to do is um, get a, a special, I don't want to call it leather paint, but it's not leather dye, it's opaque, so it's not see-through. It's kind of a leather corrector, and that goes um, on top of, of that part of the area to kind of blend it in so it looks more and matches in with the rest of the shoe. Um, and for that process, you can use paint brushes or sponges, but I always find that when that dries, it kind of leaves, it leaves bumps and it leaves, you know, little areas that I don't like. So. I used an airbrush to apply that finish. So I added that leather corrector and some water to just thin it out. And then 
not using too much, just enough to blend everything in. I went back and forth with that airbrush and kind of had to go from the toe where I needed to use more, kind of near the back of the shoe where I needed to use a lot less. So once that whole process is done, you let the shoe dry overnight. The shoe has been sitting for who knows how long and I've used acetone already and it's been back and forth. So it's time to use leather conditioner. And I'm starting out using Saphir Renovator, which is a, a leather conditioner that's really popular because it really nourishes leather really well. And it's neutral color, so you can really use that on top and, and put it on the leather and massage it in with you know, moderate pressure and uh, you know, let it sit five minutes or longer if you want. Some people let it sit overnight and then you brush it with a horsehair brush and that kind of brings it to a nice shine. After the leather conditioner has been applied, you want to use colored cream polish. And I'm going to be using some Saphir Madai Dior cream polish in Cognac. So it's a kind of a darker amber orange color, but that's really to make sure that the shoe gets some life into it. Right now it's kind of a pale tan yellow. I kind of want to add oranges and ambers and different type of golden tones into the shoe. You kind of rub it in with your fingers for control and you'll see that the shoe is going to start to take on not an immediate, it's not leather dye, it's just going to have a, a little bit of a kiss of amber and orange and all that. You just apply it one layer, you can apply more if you'd like, I'd say no more than two or three. And then once uh, it dries after five minutes, you can use a, a, a nice soft cloth or a shoe brush and just kind of go back and forth and buff it and you'll see an immediate difference and you can get that nice uh, glow that people really like from their shoes. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna apply that classic famous sought after mirror shine. And that's done using shoe wax. And it's different than cream because it's it's kind of hard. It doesn't have a lot of pigment in it. It's more um, to build up that shine so it looks like a mirror. And I'm gonna be using cognac, which is kind of the same type of orange, amber color. The easiest, quickest method is to apply multiple sequential layers with your finger. So you add a layer of wax, you wait, two, three seconds, you add another layer, and you're kind of building up layers, you know, eight to 10 layers. So you keep adding wax, keep adding wax, and then you let it dry for five minutes. Then using um, a, a cotton cloth around your fingers, and you can use anything as long as it's cotton. I'd say stuff without lint. So you wrap that around your fingers and using drops of ice water um, and water mixed with rubbing alcohol, um, that kind of mixture, um, with the wax going back and forth will give you the mirror shine. So you wet um, you wet the cloth a little bit with water and then you start to go over the wax back and forth with your two fingers. And um, you touch the wax skin. You don't have to put a lot of wax. You kind of just touch the wax with a little bit of pressure so that you get a tiny bit of wax in your fingers and you keep going back and forth, adding drop, uh, really tiny drops of water every couple of buffs. And it takes an hour or two but eventually you'll start to see a mirror shine. The hard waxes harden, they build up, and you get the mirror shine, the classic mirror shine. I also run a donation campaign where I restore and donate shoes that have been given to me. So I, I take them in and I fix them up and then I donate them to individuals preparing for job interviews, um, preparing to enter the workforce, veterans, high school graduates. This particular shoe is part of that donation campaign. So as soon as it's all ready, I am going to be donating it to someone who, who needs it. And I think I actually got a pretty good shine on this pair. And uh, overall, I'm really happy with how it turned out.